Father, we do want to thank and praise for your privilege to come into your presence with praise and singing from the heart. And ask you, our Father, to bless the service today. Bless our people. Many of them are not here today for one reason or the other. Lord, for those that are here, we thank you for their presence. Yes. And we thank you, our Father, you give us this a privilege, Lord, to come back to your house and just another Lord's day to worship you, to sing songs of praise. And we just ask you to bless us and be with us today in a very special way and meet our people's needs, Lord, as they're out on the highways and byways. In Jesus' name, amen. And we do want to welcome each one of you that are here this morning and thank you for coming and being with us in the service. Just uh, been a, a special day, amen? Amen. It's, it's, it is a special day. Amen, yes. So we're going to go ahead and get ready and get on into the singing, okay? <coughs> well, you guys probably already know that we chose next, so we're going to just go for it forego that today. We're just going to sing like 600, page 600, when the roll is called together, I'll be there. <laughs>
morning. I want to ask you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Matthew. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter number 28. Show you the seats one of you here. Now there's a lot more folks here than you think there is. That's right. I'd like to see every one of them where they're sitting. Remember what I said? You try to get away from me after you've been here for a while, you can't do it if you stay home. Because I know where you sit. I preach at you even if you ain't here. That's right. You preach you're a mess, I know it. <clears throat> but that's life. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 28, we're going to begin reading in verse number 16. Read a few verses here. The Bible says in verse 16, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. You today are exactly where he appointed you. Today. Amen, that's right. That's good. Amen. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted him. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Father, we do ask your blessings upon the reading of the word of God this morning. And uh, Lord, we just pray you'll speak to our hearts. Bless our hearts today on this Lord's Day. And Lord, we just want to thank you for all that you have for us. You're certainly a, you're such a loving God, such a precious Savior that we have in the plain this morning in your Son, the Lord Jesus. Bless each one that's here today and and our people, wherever they're at today, you can be with them too, Lord. You give them safety, you give them a good day, and may your presence be with them in a very special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to title the message this morning, for whatever reason, The Mission of the Church. Hmm. The Mission of the Church. Them disciples were sent with power, amen? All power is given unto you in heaven and in earth. Have you ever thought about that? As we walk with our Savior and live for Him, serve Him, and are obedient to Him, we have been given all of the power of heaven and earth. We're not hopeless. We're not helpless. But we have Him. And the very power of the Spirit of God that dwells in our lives give us the leadership and the guidance that we need to walk this uneven journey of life. Plus, we have this precious word. Uh, we could have it in our hearts, or memory bank, or whatever you want to call it. But we just have the word of God over in our hearts. But we have his word. We have his promises. And he has certainly promised us that he will be with us He'll guide us, he'll direct us, whatever we're doing, wherever we're going. Amen. He never leaves us to five percent. That's right. He's always there. Amen. Amen. You can't be a once you become a child of God, you'll never be alone for the rest of your life. That's right. right. That's right. Because you can always talk to him. He's, he's there. He's, he's available to him. Yes. But anyhow, I have just kind of titled the message today, the mission of the church. Wow. The mission of the church, our obedience to our Lord. That's the mission of the church. That's what we need to be doing. Amen? But in that verse number 16, the Bible says this. It says that uh, then the 11 disciples went away in the Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. I don't know about you, but every time I come to the house of God, this is his appointed place. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's right. I'm coming to the appointed place. Right. Listen, we, we can worship him out here in the woods somewhere if we want to. And he'll take you. He'll accept it. That's 
right. But this is the Lord's day. And this is the house of God. Amen? That's right. So I, I, I just enjoy being in the house of God on the Lord's day. Amen. But these men, they had uh, been there when he was crucified and, and everything. And, and I'm sure they felt so bewildered in their hearts and lives that everything that they had believed and, and, and dreamed of and, and thought would be a reality for the rest of their life had come to an end. It had come to an end. And I'm sure they didn't know really which way to go or what to do. But the Bible tells us that uh, they, they had showed up here that after the crucifixion and then the resurrection. I tell you, I think about the scripture and I think about these verses even prior to this of the women who went to, to, the, to the tomb. When they got there, they got an announcement from the angels that said, he's not here. For he's risen, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord is if you If you want some proof, just come and take a look. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I get to thinking sometimes that people really would want to know and, and uh, the proof that we serve a risen Savior. They just need to get into a good church where the Word of God is preached and the Spirit of God is felt in the service. That's right. And then it would be a thing that would let them know this thing, that what we're doing is real. This is not just a thing we do on Sunday. This is real. We come to meet with Him. Amen. Then women are going to go down there and and check things out, amen? But I'll tell you what, he said, he's risen, he, he's not here. Come and see the place where he lay. And then you go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There he shall, there we see him. Lo, I have told you. What a, what a life. Ever since I've been saved, ever since God's changed my life and the Spirit moved into my life, it's just to come to church is my life. Yes. It's my life. I come here to see Him and to feel the presence of God in the songs and in the preaching and teaching of, of God's Word. I don't know if He can do it or not, but I, I have to be able to just feel His presence. Amen. Because there's no place on planet Earth where I can go and feel what I feel when I come here. Because you know I come here to meet Him. Amen, that's right. And I believe He's here in the person of His Spirit. But anyhow, they told us that, you know, then, then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you go tell my brethren, told these things. You go tell my, my brethren that uh, go into Galilee. And there shall they see me. Amen. It's pretty hard to see the Lord Jesus at a dog fight. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. But it's not hard to see him at the house of God. Amen. That's right. And I'll tell you what, I love that. I'm not going to get on with this. Amen. But anyhow, the Bible tells us here that the 11 disciples were uh, went away into Galilee, into the mount a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Man, Thomas must have been along with them. And they, 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 every now and then he probably asked Thomas if they show up to church. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm not talking about my church folks. I'm talking about someone visiting. <laughs> they really doubt that this whole thing is really real as we think it is. But they just never met the Savior. And that's right. Amen. That's right. They've never experienced his presence in their life. Because if you ever do, it'll never be the same. Amen. So the Bible says, and then the uh, here in 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, uh, into the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Ain't that something? They worshipped him. You know, we come to the house of God, we come and we sing the songs and that really touch our heart, really give us a touch of the Spirit of God. And I'll tell you what, there ought to be anything else in the service that would cause us to doubt the fact that He's here. That's right. Amen. I don't see 
You ought to be able to see by faith. Amen. Yes. And you ought to be able to feel him in your heart that he's here. That's right. That's what I love about coming to our church out here in the country. Amen. Amen. I don't know how you feel about the real in the Baptist church, but I come here and I come because I feel the presence of my Savior. Amen. 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 That's right. I feel it. I feel it in the people that come here to worship him. Amen. As we have our little deal on Sunday mornings and we sing a song and shake hands and hug necks. Listen, we're a family. That's right. Pulled together by the presence of the Spirit of the living God. We're, 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 I mean, we're not some distant relative even. We are immediate family. Amen? That's right. And we'll spend an eternity together. Amen. Man, I don't know about you, but I, I love it. I enjoy it so much. And then the Bible tells us here uh, that in that verse 18, and Jesus came and he spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Mm -hmm. He gave them a little commission. Amen? That's right. This is a little job for you to do. You are to go he said, you, you're going to have power. He said, first of all, all power is given unto you in, 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 in me in heaven and in earth. You know what? We can never really do what we do for God if it wasn't for the fact that he has given us the power of the Spirit of God to do it. That's right. That's right. That's right. What we do to the average individual is a burden that just weights them to the ground. Amen? They can't even see how we can stand to do this every week. And used to, we came not only on Sunday, we'd be here on Wednesday night. Yes. Every Wednesday night service. Amen? Why? Because of the power of the Spirit of God that dwells in our lives. And he gives right. us that from heaven. Amen? Amen. You want to taste the heaven? Get saved by the grace of God. Give your life to the Lord Jesus and start serving Him, and all of all power will be given unto you in heaven and in earth. You'll have everything that you need, and that's the reason we come together, church. That's the reason we come together and worship Him and praise Him because we need that heavenly power in our our old fleshly bodies to help us keep on walking the walk and talking the talk, and doing what we do for His glory and for His honor. My goodness, if it wasn't for that, we'd give up and give out. Amen? That's right. But we don't. This is, this, is a, this is part of our nature now. It's in there. He's given us that power. The Spirit of God dwelleth in our hearts. Yes. And we can do it, and it's not even a problem. And then he says here, uh, I want to kick this in, you know. He said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. I had another verse over here I was going to read because, uh, you know, you just back that thing up a little bit. I've got to get it up here before I can figure out where it's at. Amen. But uh, there's another verse here. I want to read this to you real quick. All power, amen, is given. And, and it's, it's given to us by him. And I've got it open down here somewhere. I don't even see it now. But it's in there. Uh, you know, Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen, I could call the 12 legions of angels. That's right. That's access to quite a bit of power. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, but he let them know that, amen? So as, as I think, I think about all of that kind of stuff, you know, my goodness, it's over here in chapter 26, verse 45, 43. He says in verse 43, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to the Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels. Wow. Amen. You know, you, you can serve God and walk with God, and even in our life outside, quote unquote, of the church or our, or our Christian brothers, and sisters, God gives us the power. He'll send some angels to help you if you need it. He'll do it. Yes. He'll send you the Spirit of God to take care of some things that might be really bugging you or hindering you or whatever. But listen, 
If we're going to do the work of God, we can't do it in our own power, our own strength. It won't work. That's when a lot of people come, and I'm not going to say that they get saved, but something happened. There's a misfire somewhere that they didn't get the, the grace, the spirit, the power of God to, to keep walking the walk, talking the talk, and doing what God wants them to do. Yes. I, I don't know. I've, I've seen people. It's not been just too long. I've seen people that come in and got saved, got baptized, and everything done good for a little while, and then fell out. And I, and I don't understand falling out. <laughs> I mean, how do you fall out when you've got the arms of 12 legions of angels holding you up? Yes. Right. Giving you strength and power to do what you need to do. But he told them, he says, I, all power is given unto you uh, in heaven and earth. And he said, I want you to go there for it. I want you to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You know what? You'll never be alone. That's right. I got saved by the grace of God there in Tulsa, Oklahoma Baptist Church over on the east side. <clears throat> God did something in my heart I didn't even understand. But I tell you, I got I got to going out after work. I I worked a, a shift where at one month I'd be going to work at four o'clock in the morning, and the next <clears throat> month I'd go to work at twelve noon. Well, if I went to work early in the afternoon, I'd come in, take me a little 30, 40 minute nap. And I go out and knock doors to the whole part of the east part of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've met a lot of different things, amen. But they gave me the power to be there. Amen. If I, if, I went, if I went to work late, I'd get up early. <laughs> you know, the kids all go to school, mama going to work, and I'd get out and knock doors in the room. God will give us the power of the Spirit of God within these old fleshly bodies. To be able to serve him in his work. Now he'll do that. He did it for me. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you what I praise him for. I really praise him for everything he done for me. He wants us to be something special in our community. The mission of the church <clears throat> is to reach out to the unreached. To touch the untouchables and to love the unlovely. Listen, there ain't nobody in this in this world or in this community that deserves somebody from the church of God talking about them or, get, or kicking at them. Amen? Right. If they've got a problem, we need to pray for them. Right. We need to love them yeah. and see if we can't help over their problem. Yeah. That's simple. Yeah. Now, some people won't let you do it, but a lot of people will. Yeah. So we need, to, we need to take the very words of the Lord Jesus and we need to do what we need to do. He said, I want you to to teach. He said, teaching them to observe all things. We need to teach people. Uh, you can't teach them how to walk with God, how to live, how God to live while they're lost, but you can teach them the ways of God and the Spirit of God to save them and come into their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was reminded Susie a while ago. Uh, I knew her a lot longer than I knew most people out here. Well, I bet some, but, but they're all gone now. Almost every boy that I played basketball with, I guess all of them, have passed away or in the grave somewhere. And I'm still in the world. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just saying this, folks. We, we need to teach people that to you know to observe the things of God, the things of eternity. Amen. My soul. Give people something to think about. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I just don't have that in me to be able to do that. Well, I didn't either, but you know what? I got it from the Lord Jesus. That's right. I'm going to turn over that quick, make it quick. In the book of Acts, chapter number one, the disciples had come to meet with Jesus after his resurrection, and he was doing some teaching to them. And he told them, he says uh, in verse number eight, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. When he got through with this sort of talk that he gave them, he went out of, of the community there and from the Mount of Olives, they watched him go to heaven. And he told
told him, I'm going to come back to the sunny place. One day, I don't know what it would be like to be in Israel and to be able to close to the Mount of Olives when he comes back. Amen. I'd love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see that happen. Because I know where it's written here in the book of Acts. Amen. 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 The Bible says, the Bible tells us that verse number nine, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they stood looking steadfast toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, and that was angels, stood by them in white apparel, which said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, this same one that you walked with, that you saw do miracles, everything you saw him do, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And then they return to Jerusalem. That's right. Man, he's coming back. Yeah. Right there when they drop most of us, we, we passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. I read the Word of God. I get excited about it every time I read it. And I, and I think about the life that these men had. The opportunity not only to hear about Jesus, but to meet Him face to face. Amen. And have Him to change their life. And, and, and then induct them into the ministry of reaching others for His glory and honor. Lord, I didn't get to do that. Put in a little old Baptist church on the east side of Tulsa. Way out, almost out of town. And bless God, I met Jesus. And he done something special for my life. I've never got over it. And ain't even trying to get over it. Amen? Amen. I, I'm trying to get over a stroke, but I ain't trying to get over him. Amen? <laughs> I tell you what, I love him. And I'm going to serve him. Amen. And as long as I'm able to get up and go, I'm going to get up and go. Amen. I'm going to uh, But I, I want to do the work in the Lord God. And I'm, I, I just I feel blessed today to come and to see all of you that are here today. Come over just to come to the house of God. To come and sing the songs and get into the word of God for you. Amen. Listen, our blessing, our strength, our help all comes from Him. Amen. It comes from His word and His spirit. And we gotta have it, church. We gotta have it. We, we can't do it on our own. I've seen some people try to do it on their own, and they don't last long. They, they'll give up and quit. But if you're doing it because of Him living within your bosom, He's in the heart of your soul. He's there to stay. He's there to give you the grace, the strength, and the help to keep on keeping on. No matter what comes around you, you don't stop. Amen. So I just want to say today, sure good to see you here, and, and uh, I, 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 I <coughs> I'm just thinking about our church out here in the wilderness. I don't know who lives out in here. This thing in COVID shut everybody down. I used to visit all the time. And in, in you fall, this side of you fall. I used to tell, tell talk to people about the Lord. I'd do it over the over Chicago, Walmart. <laughs> and since then, everything has been on the shutdown. Well, I'm telling you, Lord, please lift the cloud. Remove this thing from we, we need to get out here in our community. If there is anybody out here that's not saved, anybody that's not in church, we need to see if we can, we can reach them with the gospel. Because if they don't get saved, folks, I mean, friends and people we know that live out here in the country, they're going to wind up in a place called hell. Right, I don't know right. about you. I don't know about you. That's right. Right. So we need to try to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. So I'm going to challenge you this morning as we're here. You know, that if you can't go out, you might have to make, try to give them a call. Amen. Uh, I'd have never thought in the world I'd make my visitation call them or text them. I don't like to text. Amen. Amen. That's the most unpersonal thing I can think of is to text. Amen. Now, when I was young, I went to Tulsa. The only thing I could do with Vinny, because I was going with him then before we got married, I'd write a little letter. It wasn't much, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was not a writer. <laughs> I might have been a fighter, but not a writer. I <laughs> thought I was a fighter sometimes, amen. You need your head and skin if you get careful. <clears throat> but 
But listen, folks, we, we do. If there's anybody out this way that's lost, we ought to try to see if we can somehow get a message to them. We've got to have them come to church. That's right. Amen. Let's bow again and have a word. Father, we love you this morning, and we thank you so much for the privilege that we have to come to your house today and to sing the songs, read your word, worship around your word, Lord, and get excited about your presence and your power and your spirit. Lord, you bless each one of the folks that's here today. Amen.